Thanks, Victor. Uh, the future of retinal uh, laser therapies, it's a big topic. So let's uh, first uh, review the laser technology. Before talking about the future, let's uh, talk a little bit about the past and the, the present. So uh, since the 40s and uh, its discovery, retinal photocoagulation has evolved immensely three, uh, through three things. First, the improvement of the laser, laser sources. Second, the options of the wavelengths you have now to treat your patient. And third, the enhanced delivery modes. So regarding the laser sources, it started in the 40s with the incandescent light and then different other sources were developed, including xenon, ruby, argon, and krypton. But nowadays, uh, modern photocoagulators are all based on solid state technology because it's more compact and it's, uh, its ability to deliver laser in advanced modes. Uh, recently, and actually just uh, I think a few days ago, uh, Cantel had the first laser with a fiber laser technology approved uh, with the CE mark. Uh, and this technology is very interesting for two things. First, the price. I think that the, the price of the, the source is uh, lower than the, the other uh, preview solid-state technology. And the other main reason is the, the ability to deliver a perfectly homogeneous laser spot profile with this uh, new technology. Laser wavelengths, as it has been uh, said uh, until recently, the 532 nanometers, the green was the almost only uh, wavelength people were using for all the retinal photocoagulation. But recently, it has been shown in many uh, publications that the 577 nanometer may offer many advantages over the 532. Uh, there's an excellent penetration through cataracts. There's a use of lower power level, uh, a peak absorption of oxyhemoglobin, and almost no absorption by macular xanthophyll uh, pigments with these seven, seven, uh, 577 nanometer uh, wavelengths. Uh, about the delivery modes, uh, until 2005, one option, only the single spot. Uh, in 2005, the multi-spot mode has been launched. Uh, with short duration and different patterns uh, possible, and this really revolutionized the way we uh, treated our diabetic patient with PRP and other uh, vascular occlusion. Uh, but recently, it has been shown that the micropulse uh, uh, delivery mode may have some uh, interesting um, uh, advantages in, in macular treatment, such as uh, CSR and DME uh, retinal uh, macular treatment. So what about the visualization? Actually, not so much. Uh, um, until recently, it was only two ways to deliver the laser. It was either the slit lamp or the indirect. And this is actually a challenge, because when you do a retinal laser, usually you use pre-acquired um, images, such as fluorescent angiogram, OCTs, uh, different uh, type of uh, images, and when you do the laser, you look at the retina of the patient and you have to compute mentally all this information and to try to superimpose the critical information of the OCT of the fluorescent angiogram in the right place on the retina, and the retina is usually also moving. So all these challenges of mental computation, uh, sometimes you have limited anatomical landmark, meaning when you look at the retina, you don't see exactly where the, the vessel and the microaneurysm are, and you can see them well on the fluorescent angiogram, but you cannot see them in the real life when you look at the retina, so it's a, it's a challenge. And the motion, all this is not a problem when you do PRP or peripheral laser or, or retinopexy. However, for macular laser treatment, this is a problem. And so there are probably some uh, new technology which may help you uh, address this problem. So augmented reality, uh, is this uh, something which can, which can help for retinal laser therapy? Uh, first of all, uh, what is augmented reality? Augmented reality is a technology which allows to overlay a virtual information over the reality. So when we, you watch football, uh, there's all, always some, some information which are overlays, such as, uh, you know, in American football, you have the, you, the yellow light, which is a virtual information, which is overlaid in real time on the reality to provide you with more information. 
So it has been uh, used in many, uh, I mean not many, in some other surgical field, mostly neurosurgery, where some information coming from the MRI or the CT scan are overlaid accurately on the surgical field during the sur surgery to help and guide the surgeon during the maneuvers. So how does it work? It's actually uh, a video which captures the reality and a virtual information coming from whatever you want. So it's in our case for retinal photocoagulation, it will be OCT or fluorescent angiogram. And this information between the reality and the virtual information will be merged in the real time. Uh, the problem is how to do so. so to do it, you need first uh, a re an image registration and second, an image rendering. So what, what is it? Image registration is the ability to recognize the reality and the other information, to know exactly where you are. So for retina, it's pretty easy. You have a lo lot of anatomical landmark, and so the system can track the retina and realize where things are. Image rendering is the modification of the virtual information to be perfectly superimposed in the reality, on the reality. So let's say, for instance, you have the OCT or the fluorescent angiogram. The image will be modified to be perfectly overlaid, superimposed on the reality. So uh, Contel has been uh, working on an image-guided laser project for uh, a few years. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, it's something which is not available yet, which will most likely be available in one year from now. Uh, so it's called, for now, Image Guided Laser Project. It's an all-in-one system, including all you have now uh, on the laser uh, system, meaning a slit lamp, a 577 nanometer fiber laser, uh, with different de delivery modes, such as the single spot, multi spot, and micro pulse, plus an end ball system. This is the new thing, including a computer, video camera, a display, and the image guided technology, which uh, integrates uh, some tracking abilities and augmented reality uh, abilities. So, why using the slit lamp? Actually, uh, the slit lamp has a very interesting. Um, uh, benefit when you do a laser, it allows you to have a 3D vision, meaning you can really focus well the laser exactly where you want, either on the surface of the retina, the macroneurism, the RP. So it allows you to really uh, focus perfectly uh, the laser. So the all in one uh, system, the image guided laser, will help you enhance the visualization. So you will have the vision you have now of the retina plus all the other. Um, uh, modal uh, information coming from the OCT or fluorescent angiogram at the same time. It will help you plan the treatment and it will then help you provide a safer uh, semi-automated uh, laser delivery. So how does it work? The step one will be to acquire a reference image. Uh, so it's the same thing as when you do a panoramic with the, with the uh, smartphone. You swap the, the smartphone to get a, one image of the whole thing. It's the same thing here. You will uh, scan the all retina with the, the slit lamp, and the system will recreate one image called the reference image. Second, you will import all the data you want, OCT, fluorescent angiogram, coming from any device. It will be an open system where you can import anything. And so the, the, the system will then overlay, superimpose all these things. So it will do some registration work, will know and recognize exactly where things are, and will be able to overlay all this information. So you will have on the screen the real life, the, the, the retina you can see through uh, the slit lamp, and also uh, all, superimpose all the other information uh, overlying the retina uh, on the screen. So then the next step will be to plan the laser. So having all this information in one, you will be able to say, okay, I want actually there's a, 
some macular DMAC here. I want to put some laser here with this power, uh, this spacing between the, the impacts, that many impacts, and so on. So you will be able to plan exactly where to, you want the, the laser to be delivered. And then the, the system uh, will be under your guidance delivering in a sem semi-automated way the treatment. And after the treatment, when it's done, you will get a report on everything. And I think it will be very interesting to get that report because when you do micropulse laser, for instance, you cannot see what you are doing. And being able to know exactly where the laser has been delivered and to track what has been done is very uh, useful. So uh, this new uh, technology will help the surgeon assess uh, the, the, the retina and really define where the retina has some swelling, where are the macroneurism, and, and everything in one will help you plan the treatment and will allow you, uh, you to deliver more accurately uh, the laser. So this is actually not done with this system. It's, uh, it's uh, another delivery uh, we've done uh, a few years ago in Los Angeles. But the system tracks the retina uh, and delivers the laser exactly where you want, under your control. So uh, in summary, the benefit of this new uh, technology will be a simplified evaluation thanks to the overlay, an optimized treatment plan, which is something you cannot do uh, currently, and a more, more accurate, safe, and secure laser delivery. Thank you very much. Well, as usual, that I've unfortunately run out of time, but I think the panel member will still be here for a few more minutes, so if anyone that has questions, then do come, come down to the panel, then we can try to answer that. And thank you very much for all of you coming and I hope you have a good uh, rest of the day.